Well, if you had only three questions to ask someone on a sales call, what those questions would be and why? If I only had two questions to ask, three, oh, okay, I get three, so not just two. That's one better. Um, I think the first thing that I want to figure out on any sales call is why the other person is sitting on that sales call with me now. And what I mean by that is I think <clears throat> anytime that you meet someone in a, in a business to business setting, you both have a goal for that meeting. And I think most salespeople, they, they shoot themselves in the foot. They totally screw it up because they come prepared with all sorts of things that they want to learn from the prospect, right? You've got your list of discovery questions. You learn them from Nick at this, this event and you've got them ready and you're going to just start asking them questions. And the problem with that is you're not respecting what the other person wants to get out of that meeting. And we talk a lot about in sales, like the idea of, of, of asking great questions to elicit information from the other person. Um, well, the best way to elicit information from the other person, which you'll then use in a sales context, give them the floor. Tell them, like, what would you like to get out of this session? So the way that I start um, almost every sales call now is I'll say something along the lines of, hey, I imagine, Andre, that you have a lot of salespeople that are reaching out to you to ask for your time. And I can't imagine that you can take every single meeting that's asked for. What prompted you to want to meet with me? So that's one question, right? Because I want to get them, I want to give them the floor first. Just let them share. Because half the time, the prospect will respond and they'll talk at you for like six minutes with all of the information that you need. I looked at your website. I learned you do this, this, and this. We're really struggling with this. I don't need to ask any questions. When you give them the floor first, you give them an opportunity to share everything that's top of mind and brain dump. And that's what I want to do. I want to get the other person talking, right? That's the purpose of a question, right? It's to encourage the other person to talk. So why not just signal that in the beginning and say, the floor is yours. So that's sort of one way, one question that you can ask. A variant of that might be, um, you know, you're the customer and, and I'm really excited to talk with you today. I certainly have a lot of questions that like I have top of mind and I've prepared some notes for this meeting, but um, I guess I'm curious, what would you like to get out of this session? Um, how can I make sure that this is a really valuable use of your time? And I'll, that's, that's very similar to the other question. The idea is just tell me what's top of mind. The whole goal for me in the, the first questions that I ask in the meeting is to give them the floor, get them to start talking, and signal that I'm actually here to listen. And when you do that, it transforms sort of this, the foundation, the stage of the meeting. Um, so. You, you gave me three questions, so I've given you two. Yeah, no, I'll give you one. I'll, I'll give you one more. So I think step one is give them the floor, right? With one of those variants, you know, what, how can I make sure this is a valuable use of your time? Um, you know, I can't imagine you take every meeting. Like, what prompted you to take this one? Um, you know, you, you might just say, hey, I'm sure you have, like, sometimes I'll even make a statement more than a question. I might say, hey, I, I'm sure you have a ton of things top of mind. So like, I'm just going to give you the floor first. That might be how I sometimes kick off the meeting. Um, and, and I might sort of signal, hey, like, I have some questions, some things that I want to learn from you, but you might have some things top of mind that you want to share first, so um, I'll, I'll defer to you. I would say that in the beginning of a meeting, again, to signal what I'm not here to do is pull out my list of the 12 questions that I have and then rip through them and they don't get a chance to, to ask the one question that they have uh, that's really important that could be make or break. Now. That assumes that you have a, a party on the other side of the table that's actually engaged and like they want to start sharing. And sometimes you don't always have that. Sometimes you need to get the other person to start talking and it's not as simple as saying, the floor is yours, talk first. So the w other way that I'll do it is when you go into a meeting like this, you likely have a hypothesis of um, the challenge that they have and you can share, I, I use, um, I, I call it typically language, where I'm sort of referencing, hey, typically when I meet with CFOs of law firms, uh, they tell me that they're frustrated with X and Y. I guess I'm curious, are either of those things that you're experiencing? What I'm doing here is I'm raise, I call it raising problems. I'm saying typically when I meet with people like the person I'm meeting with today, they tell me that they're frustrated with X and Y. And hint, X and Y should probably be things that you can help with. Um, I guess I'm curious, are, are either of those things that you're experiencing at all? And what I'm doing here is I'm not saying, hey, usually when, I'm not saying, hey, CFOs always tell me this is the problem they have. I'm not putting the other person in the box. I'm sort of saying, hey, you know, uh, Nick, usually when 
speakers come into sessions like this, they tell me that they're uh, a little frustrated because they need some coffee to wake up their mind. I'm not sure if that's something that you've experienced. And I would say, yeah, I'd love a coffee, please. The whole idea is to be like, hey, here's typically the experience of people like you. I is that right? And what I'm doing is I'm sort of focusing the conversation in the direction of, let let's talk about this thing that we can help with. So there's your three. I could probably give you maybe one more, but uh, maybe a hundred more. I could talk about it forever. But yeah, I think the biggest thing is in the beginning, set the stage of, I actually want to hear from you, not just the list of questions that I have. And when you give them the floor first, almost all of your questions will end up just getting answered anyway. And then you can have some targeted follow-up answers or questions rather.